All right, YouTube, occult literature video number 58, The Female Preeminence uh, by Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa. A very strange work for its time period. Uh, link in the description, as always, to where you can purchase my edition of this work off of Amazon. Uh, second link to my books blog, many other titles available. Uh, number of titles increasing steadily over time. I'm about two-thirds done with the 1790 Universal Fortune Teller. It's taking a while because of the arcane English used in the state of the document, but it will be done fairly soon. And then on to about a half a dozen short alchemical works before I get into the meat and bones of a couple more grimoires. Very important ones that I've been saving for a while specifically for around Halloween time, let's face it, uh, because that's when sales really spike when you're dealing with the occult. A female preeminence by Agrippa shows that he's interested in more than just the occult philosophy sort of side of things. That is, the three books of occult philosophy that he wrote. As a, the fourth one is spurious. That wasn't written by Agrippa, and we have to remember that. It's more of a classic short grimoire of its own. It's taken from that same tradition, but it's not exactly the same. It just happens to fit in with the material. Female preeminence, though, is... It's strange. It's like a philosophical tract. It's also a social tract at the same time. Uh, it was translated into English many centuries ago. I mean, it is obviously. It's completely in the public domain at this point in its English form. Some of it was archaic, cleaned that up, modernized it a bit, but largely left it intact in the original format as well. Uh, female preeminence covers the concept of the divine feminine, the heroine uh, sort of archetype that is the strong woman in a spiritual sense. Not strong woman, uh, generally speaking, within this tract, as in, well, strong independent woman don't need no man. It's not really a feminist tract, so to speak, but it is kind of proto-feminist. It's, it's more along the lines of like suffragette movement than third wave feminism, let's face it. It applauds women for, uh, in, in certain instances within the Bible, within ancient mythology from Greek and Roman traditions especially, and within modern exemplars from then European culture. It applauds women's spiritual capabilities, especially the idea of the, of the prophetess, the oracle, the muse, uh, things like that, showing women in a spiritual light, and running down those that degrade women, sort of the neck beards of the era. Apparently this was just as common in the giddy age, as Agrippa puts it, uh, of his own time during the Renaissance as it is now, that there were a lot of people, all they did was crack jokes about how women are inferior, women are degenerate, they're, they're lascivious in some nature, they're weak. Uh, Agrippa goes to great lengths to, this, to dispel this, and really is almost enforcing what we could consider the forerunner to the types of philosophies of the eugenics era, which applauded and, and in some cases openly rewarded women for their roles within the state, for their roles within a race or culture or ethnic group or something along those lines, uh, and applauds women in the case that they are not fallen, not weak, not degenerated in some way, but rather they're good mothers, they've aided their husbands, uh, in some cases openly in battle, they've uh, <laughs> certain uh, uh, sort of like uh, figures within war, you'd think of Joan of Arc or something like that, and you have a situation where Agrippa even goes back, reminds all these Christians, because that's who he's talking to, hey, look at the Bible, look at these women who single-handedly laid waste to the enemy or, or, you know, in some way supported the armies of God or were the voice of God himself through, through prophecy, through some of these sort of divine works. Uh, and so it really dispels the prevailing notion at the time that men were wise men were in charge, women weren't capable of being wise, and, and again, he goes into great detail about certain philosophical figures and figures within science that happened to be female already at that time. Uh, it's an interesting work. If you're interested in the divine feminine, the left-hand path as the sinister or, or feminized current, not in the sense of, well, men need to be kept down, we need to have a matriarchy, but in the sense of women are have an equal share in the spiritual world. They're just as adept as anybody else at witchcraft. They're just as adept within philosophy, and I do, of course, believe that's the case. If you're interested in that prevailing notion at all, as opposed to some of the, the stuff we get now, 
as far as, oh, why would you breed with women? Women are evil or, or all just out to get men. So the MGTOW bullshit artist mentality. You'll probably like this work. And it is a work by Agrippa. And these, this is the uh, notorious author of the three books of occult philosophy, which are, you know, probably second only to the lesser keys as a compilation of literature that people absorb. I will be editing and releasing those in the future as well. And so Agrippa's work is extremely important. This is one of the lesser works, one of the shorter works, uh, that doesn't get as much fame as the three books of occult philosophy. But it's no less interesting. It's extremely in-depth, rather dense, extremely philosophical, and it goes through a great long list of detail several times uh, with regards to some of these archetypes of the feminine as involved with spirituality, as involved with heroic deeds. That's about all. Peace out.